Okay, so we left off in the last video having created these two little Take One Guy animations. So we have one of him standing and we have one of him walking. So the next thing we need to do is set it up so that in the game when the person presses a button it shows him animation, uh, the animation of him walking and when they're not pressing anything it shows him standing. So that's going to take a little bit of setting up. First, let me talk a few about a few things. We're pretty much done with these graphic symbols here, or these graphics. So I'm going to collapse this folder because we're not going to use that anymore. We've already created our animations and we'll be working with these two movie clips. The set second thing is, these guys here are the instances of these objects here in my library. So I have a Take One O Man standing object, which is a movie clip, and also uh, the Take One O Man walking. And I can drag out as many of these instances as I want. And if I change, let's say I double click on the TKD, TKD Man walking, and I go inside of TKD Man walking, any change I make here will affect all the, the child or instances. So if I go like that and I go back to scene one, you can see they all now have that above their head. So obviously I don't want that, so I'm going to go back in there and delete that, but I think you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these instances, and that's totally safe because the originals are still here in my library. What we're going to do is insert a new symbol. I'm going to call my new symbol TKD man and all and I call it all because it's going to house all of the rest of the movie clips for TKD man so we're going to make sure it's the type of movie clip and click OK and here I have my registration point once again and I'm going to drag out TKD man standing now TKD man standing and I'm, by the way I'm lining it up with the uh, crosshair the uh, registration point in the same spot TKD Man Standing is an animation that is, uh, the movie clip has an animation in it that's about 140 frames long. Remember, if I double click on TKD Man Standing, remember we put this together in the last video. But in TKD Man All, I took that animation, that TKD Man Standing, and dropped it here. And even though it's just one frame, it's going to show the entire animation as long as it stays on that first frame. So if I was to tell the computer, computer, you know, show this first frame, it'll, it'll show the entire 140 frame animation simply because it's a movie clip. If this was a graphic symbol, and I've shown videos on how to create uh, graphic, uh, graphic symbols uh, when you're creating your animations, uh, it would not do that. It would just stay on that first frame and it wouldn't show the rest of the animation. But specifically, because it's a movie clip, it does show the entire animations. The second thing is, we need a frame where it shows him facing the left as well. So essentially what would happen is, if the Taekwondo man is facing the right, it'll show frame one. And then in frame two, I'll have him facing left. And I'll say show frame two if he's facing left. And if he's walking right, I'll have in frame three an animation of him walking right. And frame four will be an animation of him walking left. And when the game is playing and the person presses the right arrow key, I'll tell it to show frame three, which is him walking right. Or frame four, if he's walking left, or etc. I think you get the picture. So we're going to start that up first. I'm going to go over here to frame number two and right click and insert a keyframe. And what that's going to do is it's going to duplicate frame one in frame two. And now I'm going to go up here to modify, transform, which is here, and flip vertical, or excuse me, flip horizontal. What that did is it flipped my movie clip to the left. So it's the exact same movie clip, but reflected to the opposite side. So frame one shows him facing right, frame two shows him facing left. We're going to go over here to frame three, and this time I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. The reason is I need to drag over TKD Man walking here. I turn on onion skinning to make sure that it matches with the previous frame. Zoom in a little bit there. Yeah, looks pretty good. 
And next, I'm going to insert a keyframe, right click, insert keyframe. So it duplicates Take One O Man walking. So now I have two frames of Take One O Man walking. And what I'm going to do, I just turn off onion skinning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modify, transform, and flip horizontal once again. And so now we have him facing uh, right standing, facing left standing, facing right walking, facing left walking. So let's go back to scene one. And what I'm going to do is drag out TKD man all and drop it on my stage. So this is an instance of TKD man all. If I run this game right now, we're going to see him flipping out. Watch, we'll press control enter. You can see he's just flipping all over the place. The reason for this is that it is currently, if I go back inside TKD Man All, running through all of these movie clips over and over and over and over. What we wanted to do is stay on frame one for the time being. Now, I could tell the computer when I code it, stay, you know, go to and stop frame one, but to say extra organized, we are going to label these frames. So I'm going to go over here to frame one, go to properties. So I selected frame one here. It's highlighted blue and you can see here it says label and the name. So I'm just going to name it TKD guy walking, uh, excuse me, standing. So I'm going to say stand right. So that's kind of long. But uh, it's at, it, when you look at it at a glance, you'll know what it is when you're coding. So uh, it's up to you how you want to name your labels, your frame labels. But uh, for this video, I think this is what I'm going to call it. And if I decide to change it, I will let you know in the video. So we have TKD guy stand right. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Control C. Go over to the second frame. And I'm going to paste it in, but this time I'll say stand left. Now notice that some of the words, some of the letters uh, are capitalized. It's called humpbacking. And, uh, and it's kind of common with uh, programming to do this. So you have uh, your first word, I guess TKD is an acronym, but your first word would be all lowercase and then every word after that will have their first letter um, as an uppercase word. So TKD guy with a capital G, S with a capital S, and L with a capital L. Uh, so in the second frame I now have TKD guy stand left. I'm going to go to the next one. This is the walking frame, the third frame. I'll paste it in again. But instead of stand right, I'm going to say, oops, Delete the stand here. Walk right. Copy that. Paste it here for the last frame. And you, as you may have guessed, right left with a capital L. So double check your spelling here because Flash is case sensitive when you're working with frame labels and instance names. So make sure that everything is spelled properly. Double check before you go forward because it will save you headache later. So now let's go back to scene one and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what we have here. If I run it once again, it's going to be flipping out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select our TKD guy. So he's selected. You can see all the properties for the TKD guy here. And I'm going to go ahead and go here to window and click actions. And this is where I can type in all of the code for this instance of TKD man all. So anything I type here are going to be are going to be the instructions for TKD man all and you can confirm that by looking down here it says TKD man all. If I was to click on the background right now, it'll say layer 1 frame 1. I'm writing the code for layer 1 frame 1 right now. If I click on TKD guy again, it shows TKD man all. So we're going to start off by creating a on clip event. Anything that I want the movie clip to do has to be within an on clip event handler. And the way that works is you write on clip event. And there's two kinds that we're going to be working with. 
The first one is load. So I'm going to put an open parentheses, load, close parentheses, open curly bracket, and skip a line, close curly bracket. If you have Flash, uh, newer versions of Flash, it will automatically close curly bracket for you. So basically, in a nutshell, what I'm telling Flash to do is to load uh, these, what you know, these instructions, whatever I say in here, as soon as the uh, as soon as the movie, uh, the uh, Swift file runs, and it will do anything I say in here one time. So for example, if I say trace, and you can try this too, I'm learning AS2 in quotation marks and close the parentheses and put a semicolon, I'm telling it to give this message to me in the output window. So a trace is basically it returns some value to you in the output window and it's only used for you, the, the programmer. Uh, no one, if you like were to you know, post this game uh, on a website or something, no one would see your output come out uh, from the output window show up. It's just for you while you're working with Flash, it'll show you that. And it's a kind of a tool for you to check to see if things are working or uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. And then this is in quotation marks and anything in quotation marks is called a string. So it's going to return this sentence, I am learning AS2. If the quotation marks weren't there, it would get confused and it, would, it wouldn't understand uh, what I'm asking it to do. So we'll talk more about that as we go forward as well. So right now, if I press run or control enter, you can see it's still flipping out, but over here it says I am learning AS2 and it only told me one time. Well, instead of that trace, let's delete that. So what I want to tell Flash to do is to go to frame one of this movie clip and only show frame one. So the first thing I'm going to write is this, and this is this, this guy. Because we're writing on the actual movie clip, it's referring when you write this to what that movie clip is, which is himself. I add a dot and say, go to and stop. So now what I'm telling it is in this movie clip, go to and stop on the timeline. So go to and stop refers to the timeline. And I have to say where. So within parentheses, open close parentheses, I'm going to write down the location. So if I put one, it'll go to frame one. If I put two, it'll go to frame two. But the thing is we labeled our frame. And since we did that, we can actually write down the frame label. So it's easier at a glance to see uh, where he's going in my code. And also it's easier because it, or it's more useful because later on, if I move the um, frame of him walking or standing or whatever, it won't affect it. Let's say I have frame him and walking and standing in frame one right now, but later on I add another frame in there and now he's in frame two. Well, since I labeled that frame, it doesn't matter. It'll go to the frame label rather than the number of that frame. So I'm going to type in, in quotation marks, TKD guy stand right. It'll do the exact same thing. If I was to type in, let's say I want him to face the left when the game starts, TKD guy stand left, showing the frame of him standing left. If I say TKD guy walk left, we'll show him walking left. So we're going to put it back at TKD guy stand right. And we're going to stop there for this for this uh, next section. Go ahead and try that out. Be mindful of all your uh, your frame label names. Make sure you have the correct uh, spelling and I'll see you in the next section.